Hello, it's Rob here from Woodward English. How is everyone? How has your year been so far? It's been a while since my last, last live stream. I hope you're all doing well. Great to see some familiar faces. Now, of course, this is, I'm Rob, I'm from New Zealand. If you didn't know, English is my first language. Um, this is New Zealand. It's summer here, so this is what you can expect. Now, let's get into the topic. There are so many things we're going to see today. Uh, we're going to look at IELTS vocabulary. IELTS is the international exam that you need to study abroad, like inter universities or for immigration in different countries. So IELTS is one of the biggest exams in the world. It's probably bigger than TOEFL, okay? It's International English Language Testing System from memory, okay? So this today we're going to look at uh, IELTS vocabulary. So this lesson is not going to be a basic level. It helps to have intermediate level or above. And we're going to look at 38 specific verbs. Hey, Iran, good to see you, mate. How's everything? How's Rosanna? Okay, so we've got hello to everyone. I'm not going to say hello to all of the people because it starts getting crazy. <laughs> and I want to get onto the topic. Anyway, let's have a look at this IELTS vocabulary. Oh, no, there's something I want to show you. <laughs> Have a look at this. Ta -da! I had a slight accident, just so you know. I mentioned what happens to the channel members. So, Iran, you're one of our long, longest members. Check out the members section and you'll see a lot of detail, a lot of vocabulary about what happened and everything like that. So, anyway. Ah, oh, great. Hey, it's good to see you on Keliga also. Thanks for being here, help being a mod. Now, let's go back to here. IELTS vocabulary, 38 verbs. Is in the chat, please let me know. Is there anyone who is going to be doing the IELTS soon or this year maybe? Or, I mean, if you're not going to do IELTS, it doesn't matter because this is going to be useful in general. Okay, this is just going to be useful in general. But it also helps you for the reading section of the IELTS exam. So, what I have here, now when I put these verbs on the screen, da -da, you're going to think, well, those are easy. Oh, bounce, burn, change, congeal, contract. You know these, don't you? But you have to be careful. There are some small, slight differences. For example, if we have a look at this sentence here, are oh, you doing it in March? That's good. Oh, I love the IELTS exam. I used to love teaching it to the students because they had a specific goal. It's like you pass the exam or the test or you don't. So I loved helping students achieve their goals. But anyway, let's have a look. So you think we have this sentence here. It says the planet Earth moving round on its axis. And you think, which of these verbs best describes this action? Is it bounce? No, the earth doesn't bounce. <laughs> Does it burn? Well, at the moment, with climate change, it's sort of burning, but no. But the planet Earth moving round on its axis. Now, which of these verbs best describes this action? And you think, oh, okay, it could be drop a road. What do we got here? Is it revolve or is it rotate or is it turn or is it spin? Now, these four verbs are quite similar in meaning, but they are different. And you need to know exactly in which situation you need to use each one. And the first person to have, have put a guess or have their guess is Iran from Brazil. Puts rotate. What is the difference between rotate? Actually, maybe I'll, 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 I have to type with one hand. <laughs> okay, let me see. Things, crazy things might happen. Um, okay, let's put that there. 
So we have, what do we got? One second. Oops. Oops, wrong way. Ha, there it is. So if we say, what were those four verbs? We've got rotate. What's another one? What's another possibility that you think it could be? We have uh, spin. Another one. What is the difference between all of these? They sound the same. What's in the other one? Um, revolve was the other one. And there's another one. What was the other one? The other one was uh, turn. That's another one. Now, let's have a look. So we've got rotate, well, spin, revolve. Oh. So what is the difference? Because they all sort of mean similar things. And this is why I like IELTS, because you need to know the specific word, the specific meaning. Spin is a short rotate. Uh, maybe. Okay, oh, oh, let's start with rotate. Oh no, let's start with revolve, okay? Let's start with revolve. For example, revolve is if you have, okay, I'll try and draw things, let me see. Um, uh, shape tool. Okay, so here, oops. <laughs> Oh, that's all right. Okay, so here we have Let's imagine that this is the Sun, okay, and we have um, Planet Earth we'll make the earth green. Okay, there's planet Earth, which is a little bit smaller Now, which do we use for the earth going around the Sun? Which one would we use? Okay, so this is the sun, and this is the earth. So when this happens around the sun, like this, what is this called? This is actually revolve, okay? So re revolve means to go around in a circle, okay? So you're going around in a circle like this. Oops. That is to roll. So you have a fixed point here. This is a fixed location, a fixed point. And this here is revolving around a specific point. So we have the, the, the sun here and it goes around a certain point. That is revolve. And is that what the earth does? Is that? It's not. It's staying in one position. Whereas revolve, it goes around something. Rotate is where it stays in a fix, like a revolver. Yeah, it's like it spins around, like in a revolver and a gun, like it spins around the bullets, they spin around like, not, uh, what do you call it? The chamber. It spins like that. So yeah, that is a revolver. I think this could be the origin of that name. I'm not too sure about the etymology or the origin of it. Now, rotate is, for example, if we have planet Earth. Okay, sorry, there's no more oceans. It's just land. <laughs> now, the planet Earth has its axis like this. Okay, and what happens is... It spin or moves on its axis, okay? So it goes around like this, but it stays. For example, um, a person can rotate and they can spin. But what is the difference between rotate? It's like through the central part. For example, rotate, move around on its axis or center. Let me have a look. I've got my notes here. Oops, wrong one. It's like move in circles around a fixed middle point. 
So the Earth revolves around the Sun, that is correct, but when it stays in one position and it rotates or moves like this, that's called rotate. And it can also be called spin. But what's the difference between, ah, for example, on a helicopter, it, it, the, the, the blades, they rotate around a, a single point. But what's the difference between rotate and spin? What is the difference? Spin is very fast, it's very quick, quick. For example, a ballet dancer, they, they spin. If they do it slowly, they rotate. But if it's a ballet dancer, they woohoo, they spin very quickly. A washing machine spins. A, your head spins at three o'clock in the morning sometimes. <laughs> okay, for example, yeah, so a ballet dancer spins. So spin means it's very fast. Rotate is usually slow, often. So in this situation, which one do we use? The planet Earth moving round on its axis. The correct answer, which um, Iran got correct, is... I'll put it in the chat. Rotate, okay? So the Earth has an axis and it rotates on its axis like this, okay? It rotates. It doesn't spin. If it spins, everyone comes off the planet, ah, like this. <laughs> okay, so that was verb number one. Okay, we saw four verbs, but rotate is the main one. Let's have a look at the next one. So if I give you this example, number two, a washing machine in its final stage of a wash. Okay, what happens in the washing machine in its final stage? Number two, so if you put a, a verb, put like number two and the answer, because some of them might get mixed up for people that arrive late. So number two, what do you think it is? Is it rotate, spin, or revolve? A washing machine, you know, where you wash your clothes, in its final stage of a, <laughs> of a, of a wash, centrifuge, <laughs> huge, <laughs> yeah. But you have to choose one of these verbs up the top. Number two is, what do you think it is? Rotate, spin, turn or revolve spin yeah let's see what other people have remember spin a washing machine spins iran spin how the spin exactly so for number two oops it would be i'm putting all of the answers in the chat it is spin. Let's go. Okay. So number two, it spins because a washing machine is very fast. It goes like this. It's like just to get the last water out of the clothes maybe. Okay. Uh, to spin clothes in a washing machine. Well, yeah, it's just that's the action that it's describing. Let's look at verb number three. How about this one? Boom. The moon moving around the earth. So put three and your verb with what you think is the answer. Put three with the verb that you think it is. Is it rotate? Is it spin? Is it turn? Is it revolve? So three. You think it's revolve? <laughs> Let's see some other people with their options. So the moon, so it's changed. So this now, let's change the colors here. So this is now planet Earth. Uh, okay, there's Earth. And let's make the moon sort of whitey. That'll do Oh, we're gonna make it like a little gray, maybe. That'll do. 
Revolve, revolve, revolve. Exactly. It is number three. The moon moving around the earth is revolve. So I'll put that in here. Revolve is the correct answer. And my question is why? Because revolve means it moves around a center point. So here's the center point, which is in this case, the planet Earth, and it moves around it. It's not spinning. If we say the moon is spinning, it's like, it's going like this very quickly, and all of the moon aliens, they fly off, okay? It's like moves very, that spin. Rotate, like it means it slowly moves from a central point, okay? We haven't seen turn yet, We'll see that in a moment, okay? So revolve, the moon goes around a central point, okay? So it goes around a central point. The next one, so these are easy, but you can see there are small differences between, for example, these three verbs that we've seen so far. Rotate, spin, turn, and revolve, okay? So, you have to remember which verbs we have already used. We can only use a verb once. Okay, so we cannot repeat the verb, just so you know. Okay, the next one. Which do you think this is? Okay, let's bring these down a little bit. I'll put it over here. What do we got? It says... The temperature quickly becoming lower during the night. The quick, the blah, blah. the temperature quickly becoming lower during the night. Which of these verbs do you think it is? Is it bounce, burn, change, congeal, contract, crack, crumble, drop, erode, erupt, escape? So put the number, for example, four, and then the verb that you think it is. Freeze, drop. I'll put my answer, but I'm not going to publish it just yet. Turn. Mm, you think it could be turn. <laughs> freeze, drop. What is freeze? I've got two different got the mouse here and a mouse over there. Um, freeze is like when it goes below zero degrees and for example something liquid usually becomes solid. For example water becomes ice. That is an example of freeze. Okay lots of people have putting the correct answer. Now, down is, would not be correct because down is like not in this situation. It goes down. You can say the temperature goes down during the night. That's possible. But down, down's not here even. <laughs> we need verbs. Down is, uh, yeah. So you can't use down. So use like an adverb. Drop, turn, drop. Okay, here's the correct answer in the chat. Number four, it is drop, okay? So it means the temperature drops, which means to make something lower or less, to make it lower or less, often suddenly or accidentally. Is there another word that we could use, maybe? Burn, congeal, contract, drop, erode? No, that's with land. Uh, fade, flow, there's another one that's similar. Rotate, subside. What is subside? Could it be subside? You don't know what subside is? Subside also, subside also means to go down. But what's the difference between drop and subside? What is the difference there? So drop, for example, 
the price of pen drives or chocolate dropped last year. Okay, so it dropped last year. Or another example, he accidentally dropped his mug. Ooh, it goes down quickly. It can be accidentally. But subside. Okay, could be change. Quickly becomes lower during the night. Yeah, the, the temperature could change. That's another possibility. But specifically, quickly become lower. Because change can be slow. It could be quick, maybe. But normally it just... It changes, but drop is more specific because it goes down quickly. As I mentioned before, okay, let's look at this one. So this one here is drop, but I mentioned another word. How about this one? We'll talk more about drop in a moment. A house slowly sinking into soft ground. Okay, so we have the ground like this, and we have a house like this. Oh, okay, I need to put some color here. Um, what color is the house? Gray. Okay, there it is. <laughs> Boring gray color. Okay, imagine this is the house. There's no roof, because I can't draw it at the moment. Um, okay, so you got the top here. Oops, there we go. There's the house. <laughs> so here, slowly sinking into soft ground. Okay, so we've got sink there. We're going to use sink for something else. Betty, yes. You've got it. <clears throat> Oops. Where did my check go? There it is. One second. Um, oops, there it is. I'll put the answer there. It's difficult doing things with one hand. <laughs> oops. Okay, here it comes. So, the correct answer is subside. What does subside mean? compared to sink. Sink, it goes down, but normally sink is associated with water. Something's on top of the water and then blip, 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 it goes down like a ship, like the Titanic. <laughs> the Titanic, past tense of sink, is sank, S-A-N-K. Let me put that there. So we have, um, oops. So the past of sink is sank. Okay, the, the Titanic sank. But what is the difference between sink or sank and put that one over here and this one here, subside. How could you describe subside? They're similar meanings, but they are different. So I put subside in, subside in the chat. What does subside mean? Now, normally subside means to become less. That's one. For example, the water, subs like in a flood. Okay, let's imagine... Uh, Okay, there's water coming up here. This is the water. And then suddenly, the water, because... Okay, let's just use this one here. Let's look at this. Lots of vocabulary today. Not just, not only verbs. Okay, so there's a flood. Okay, there is a flood is when there's a lot of water coming up and the water comes up and covers everything. For example, it rains a lot. There's a lot of rain. And then the water, blah, 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 blah. And it comes up like this. Okay? But eventually, the water does not continue forever. And often, the water does not stay in that position. So what happens? 
the water slowly goes down, okay? The water or the flood water subsides. The flood water goes down, it disappears, slowly goes down, okay? So this is the water, the flood water subsiding. But also, in this case, subside can refer to a house can also subside because the ground is not solid, there is, there are no, there's no foundation or anything, there's no foundation. It slowly goes down, usually over weeks or months, so you cannot Normally, you cannot see it happen. It just slowly goes down and sometimes there are cracks in that. So this is subside, where it slowly... It does not sink. Yeah, wood does not sink. Well, it depends on the wood. Normally, wood does not sink. I do. Wood, wood sinks. <laughs> okay, so we have... So the house subsides, so it can be for to sink to a lower than normal level, okay? So the house is supposed to be here, but it subsides, you know, it subsides, it goes down into the ground, which is not a positive thing, okay? So the correct answer is number five, subside. Whew. Next one. What about this one? Talking about water. Thanks, Dita. Hi, JJ. What, water slowly being converted into vapor. Which of these verbs does it refer to? Water slowly being converted into vapor. Put your answer. Six and the verb. Someone's got it correct. Someone else has got it correct. This is an easy one. I need easy ones sometimes. <laughs> yes! Exactly. Good one, Iran. So we have, oops, not 56, 6. The correct answer is, here it is in the chat. Oh, I keep putting it in the wrong place. Here it is. It's coming. Got one hand. Here it is. Ha. Boom. Evaporate. Oh, so many intelligent people in the chat. That's awesome. Okay, so evaporate means to change or make something, normally a liquid, change into steam, which is, and disappear. For example, the water soon evaporated into the sun. Now, in, for example, in the IELTS exam, you need to know a lot of these science, science words. I mean, in your language, you probably know what it is, so it's easy. But you need to know these types of uh, words or this type of vocabulary in the IELTS exam, especially in the reading section, because a lot of the reading sections in the academic version they have um, scientific articles, usually, okay? So, but that was an easy one. Very simple. This one, ha <laughs> ha! Cooking fat becoming solid on an unwashed plate. Okay, this is gonna be good. What do you think this is? Cooking fat, okay? Now, some people, like when you fry some sausages or you fry some, I don't know, some french fries or chips, whatever you want to call them. And sometimes after it's been cooked, you do it in the frying pan, okay? You have a frying pan and you're frying your sausages and everything like that. And if you do not clean the frying pan immediately, okay, I'll write the word frying pan. Uh, 
Okay, save a frying pan. I need to save that one for later. Okay, so we have a frying pan, which is... Let me see if I can draw one. Oh, it's a bit hard. Ah. <laughs> I'm a teacher, not an artist. Even though many teachers often have to be artists. But it's not my case. <laughs> okay, here I have a frying pan. Yes! And in this frying pan, I am frying some... I'm frying some sausages or french fries, okay? And then I'm very hungry. And when you're frying frying pan, some people, they use oil. Okay? Sometimes they use oil or sometimes they use, which is pretty disgusting, <laughs> Sorry. Sometimes they use fat, okay? Like animal fat, sometimes called lard. But if you do not clean the frying pan immediately, what happens? This frying pan, or on your plate, this plate, for example, uh, or, or in the frying pan, at the beginning, it's hot, and it is not solid in the frying pan. It is hot, and it is not solid. Ah, someone's got it right. Yes, good one, Dita. So at the beginning, the oil or the fat is not solid. But when it becomes solid, it goes from a liquid or a hot liquid it becomes cold, and then it becomes like this white, solid mess, okay? It is a white, solid mess. What is that white, solid mess? It's like a, it's like that, and it's difficult to clean because it's sticky. If you do not an unwashed plate or an unwashed, a plate that has not been washed, a frying pan. For example, I see some people put melt. In this situation is the opposite of melt. Because at the beginning you have some lard or fat, you put in the frying pan, and then it goes from solid, blah, 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 to liquid. That is melt. But this is the opposite. It goes from a liquid to like a, blah, a white solid. Now the correct one, and one person put it in the chat, it is, there it is, congeal, okay, it's like, becomes like a white semi-solid, okay, it congeals. So congeal, where's my, to make something thick or semi-solid, especially by cooling okay but it's not just from cooling for example the the blood had congealed around the cut okay how can you improve the reading part learning lots of vocabulary that's that's the most difficult part about the IELTS reading section is learning vocabulary because one word can be like oh for example if the word smolder appears in the reading test in the IELTS, you think, <gasps> what is that? You can speak English very well and everything like that, but just the one word sometimes can be like, oh. So you just need to seriously increase your vocabulary for the IELTS reading section. And that's the objective today. Okay, so that was number seven. Let's have a look at number eight. Traffic, moving smoothly along a motorway. What is a motorway? Before we begin, what is a motorway? Now, a motorway, sometimes in American English, actually, I'll just write over here.
sometimes it's called a highway or sometimes a, no, in, a, in a city it's normally a freeway okay a motorway it's like the big roads for with many lanes like two three four lanes that go through the middle or around a city in British English it's called a motorway in uh, American English it's often called a freeway but you'll find the IELTS exam they accept both British English and American English so you need to know that they both accept it accepted okay because it's an international English not just one area but you find a lot of times a lot of the reading texts a lot of the listening um, is with British English but since it's an international English exam they accept them all so traffic moving smoothly it's not like it's not like that it's like just smoothly along a motorway one person has an answer who else put number eight number eight and your answer what do you think it is I'll just give you a moment I'll put my answer in the chat, but I won't publish it yet while I'm waiting for everyone. So one person has an answer. The traffic moving set. Iran also, very good. Who else? This is all, I mean, this vocabulary that we're looking at today is also useful for the TOEFL test but I prefer the IELTS exam in general yes yes four answers and the four answers are correct exactly flow five answers six answers oh, lots of intelligent people here now flow is normally associated with water well it can be with anything really but for example, if you open, um, you have it. Do you know, anyone know what a tap is? What is a t a tap? I'll put it. This is a noun. Exactly. That's right. If anyone knows what's what's the word of freeway in, is in Spanish, it's in the chat. Um, a tap, which is also called a faucet, a tap and a faucet, a tap and a faucet. What is it? Let's do my incredible drawing skills again. Uh, we're, we're going to do it. Paintbrush. Okay, let's go... Okay, and <laughs> um, whatever you turn it like this. <laughs> uh, I know you don't come here to learn English. You you come here to see how terribly I draw. I know that's the truth. Ah. <laughs> uh. You're not interested in English, you're just interested in how terrible I draw. <laughs> okay, let's have a look. Okay, with imagination, please, you need imagination when I draw. Okay, this is a faucet in American English and a tap in British English. And in New Zealand, we use tap and Australia. And everywhere around the world except for the United States of America. They use faucet. Okay, so the water that when it comes out of the faucet, normally if you open it a lot, it flows. Okay, it's a continual stream of liquid. Okay, it is a continual 
stream of liquid. It moves freely and continuously. Okay, so if the traffic is moving, moving smoothly along a motorway, it is a, it is flowing, it's continuously, there's no stopping or anything like that. Okay, I have another verb for you. It doesn't appear here. What do you call it when it's not flowing continuously? When it does this. Blip, blip, blip. And you're in bed at night. You're in bed and you're like, ah, oh, finally I can go to sleep. And then suddenly in the distance you hear blip, blip. And your eye does this. It's like, oh, what is that? Where is it coming from? What is this action? Now, drop is, it's not a verb here. Drop means to go down, okay. Let, it's not drop, but it can be a drop. Ha! What is the verb? So we have a drop. So this is a drop, that's very good. But what is the verb? Betty, you've got it right. The verb is, oh, what did I just do? The verb is to, it's not to drop. It is to drip. It doesn't appear here. No, I'll just put that up there somewhere. The verb is to drip. Blip is like individual drops fall. Drip, drip, drip. Okay. They are a drop, but the action is to drip. So you can see the difference. To drop usually goes to go down quickly. So the difference between to drop and to drip, there is a difference. To drop. Okay, there's more than 38 verbs today, but it doesn't matter. To drop means to go down quickly or accidentally. Oops, it dropped. Or ooh, 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 it dropped. But to drip is when individual drops, blip, blip, of liquid go down. Okay? So that's the difference between to drop and to drip. Whew. Okay. And. Let's go. So traffic moving smoothly along the motorway is flow. I put the answer somewhere, did not I? Let me have a look. I put the answer somewhere. Yes, up the top. Okay, the next. Are you ready for the next one? Number nine. Whew, lots of vocabulary here. Talking about water. What do we got? Water changing from a liquid to a solid because of the cold. What or which of these verbs do we use to describe this action? Which of these verbs do we use? So number nine. Yes. Yes, couple of people already have it correct. Yes, oh, I like this. I like it when you guys know. It is, I'm just gonna put the answer because it is freeze, okay? So the verb is to freeze. A quick question, when you learn a new verb, for example, the new verb today is to freeze. Don't just learn, ah, freeze is this in my language. Don't just translate. One, use it in a sentence, but two, learn the past tense and the past participle. So what is the past tense of to freeze? And what is the past participle? 
So what is the past tense? And what is the past participle? Oops. So what is the past tense? And what is the past participle of these verbs? I'm giving you time to write it in the chat. Um, there we go. What is the past tense and the past participle? Okay, so we have the past tense is froze. Exactly. And the past participle is frozen. Exactly. Like I think there's a mo I think there's a movie called Frozen. I'm not too sure. <laughs> I might be wrong. <laughs> so next time you see Frozen, I know that's the past participle of the verb to freeze. Okay, so when you learn a new verb in English, don't just translate it to your language. Okay, don't say to freeze, congelar, or whatever it is in your language. Look for the past participle and the past and the past tense version of it. To freeze, froze, frozen. Because sometimes it's irregular. Sometimes it's not, but it's good to know. So water changing from a liquid to a solid because of the cold. Liquid becomes solid, it is. To freeze. A lot of intelligent people in the chat. That is great. Okay, next one. How about this one? Glass. Changing from a solid to a liquid in very high heat. Yeah, frozen is the past participle, froze is the past. Number 10, put your answers in the chat. Which of these verbs do you think it is? So number 10, I'm going to put mine in there, but I'm not going to publish it yet. Yep, one, two, three, one, two. Yeah, lots. I'm gonna put mine. Everyone knows this one. It is melt. Exactly, melt, melted, melted. Uh, so it changes. So it's normally it it's associated melting with water, like ice. You have ice and you have an ice cube on the table and slowly bloop, it melts, okay? Or the most common use of melt is when you have an ice cream and you're eating the ice cream and then suddenly bloop, bloop, and it starts going down your arm like this and you have to lick your arm like, oh, you, you don't do that? Oh, sorry, I do. Anyway, so it's the ice cream melts and it goes down your arm. But there's a skill to it so it doesn't melt. But that's for another lesson. <laughs> we'll talk about ways to eat an ice cream in another lesson. So glass changing from a solid to a liquid in very high heat is melt. Exactly. That was easy. The next one is going to be difficult. Because I did this in my IELTS lessons a long time ago because I like to show people how to learn vocabulary. A loose wheel on a car. I, I know what everyone's going to put at the beginning. Um, 11. What do you think it is? A loose wheel, not just a wheel. A loose wheel. I'll put that down here. Might need it later. Ah. Oh. Okay, let's look at, for example, what is the opposite of loose? Loose. What is the opposite? Loose is an adjective. Okay, just so you know, loose is an adjective. It's not lose. Uh, 
Listen to the pronunciation of this. Just so you know. They're different. They're completely different words. Oh, Lauren Ibsen. No, we don't want you. Not today. Listen to the pronunciation of this. Okay. Lose. Loose. Lose. Loose. So this is a long one. This is to lose, lose. It's a long one. And this one, short, loose. But they're not connected. So the opposite of loose is... What is the opposite of loose? You can have a pair of jeans. You have a pair of jeans. And if you go on a diet for like 10 years, <laughs> you go on a diet. Okay? And then suddenly, it doesn't happen often. It's like, oh, it's loose. It's like, I can put another person in my pants. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> okay, so the opposite of loose is tight. This is more common after New Year's and your birthday and eating a lot over the holiday period. You have some extra kilograms. Oh, you have some extra kilograms. And you put your pant, your jeans on and it's like, oh, it's really tight, okay? So the jeans are tight or woohoo, it's loose. This oh this is very loose. This is good. But if it's stuck to my skin, it is tight. Okay? So these are so loose wheel. So if you have a car and it's like and there's a wheel and it's like this, it's not fixed onto the car like it should be. It's like, uh oh, it's doing this from side to side. What is this action of going from side to side? It's not turning, you got turning, yeah, but this is loose, it's not really turning, it's like, whoop, doing this. What do you call this action? This action, like going from side to side, is... I'll put it in the chat, yeah, hey, Tomic, it is exactly, it is wobble. No, bounce is like boing, 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 and hopefully your wheel of the car does not do that. You have serious problems. So it is wobble. So this is the word wobble. And if you see this in the exam right now, you think, <gasps> what is it? Now you know, wobble. For example, I've got, I've got another example somewhere. Uh, so wobble means to move from side to side in an unsteady way. It's like, whoop. Another example of wobble is jelly. Blah, 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 blah. Jelly wobbles, like, blah, blah, blah. before you eat it. Jelly wobbles on your plate if you move it. Or if you eat too much, if you look at my stomach, it's like, blah, 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 wobble. <laughs> this wobbles when you walk sometimes. <laughs> that is to wobble. So a loose wheel on a car is wobble. Is this a new verb for you? I think for many people it's a new one. So it is wobble. So he was very fat and his stomach wobbled as he... A duck wobbles! Yeah, it's like it goes from side to side. Exactly, that's a very good one, Tomek. A duck wobbles. It goes from one side to another as it walks like that. Okay? So that is number 11. Next, uh, next verb is... This one, which verb do you think it is? Zigzag means to go like this. This is zigzag. Goes this direction, then this direction, then this direction, then this direction. Okay, that is zigzag. It goes there, then it goes in another direction. That is zigzag. And ducks, they just go from side to side. They don't go here, and then there, then there. For example, if someone's trying to shoot you, go in zigzag, don't go straight. 
the things that you learn at high schools in the United States. <laughs> okay, so here, number 12. I'm going to type my answer for now. One person's got it right. What is, ooh, okay, interesting. Spill is normally associated with a liquid, okay? So it cannot be spill because spill is normally associated with a liquid. Yes, Iran's the first one to get it correct that I can see. Good one, Gloria. Exactly, it is escape. So spill means to accidentally, to fall over the edge of a container or whoops, usually by accident. Uh, where's my example? Like if I have a cup of coffee, whoops, and I spill it on the table, but that's a liquid. Whereas this gas coming out of a faulty valve, it's like the tube, it's like this part here, maybe. If it were gas, not liquid. Because gas is air, so it escapes. Okay, so that one's an easy one. This one. A rubber ball hitting the ground and going, ouch, going back into the air. A rubber ball, bong, hitting the ground and going back into the air. And then again, now spread is different. Spread, JJ, is like, like on a table. You spread things out like you have a sandwich. I can't do it with this hand. <laughs> you have a sandwich and you have some butter or you have some bread. That is spread. Spread. That is spread. Okay. 13. Yes. Someone's got it right. Bump doesn't appear in my list, so it's not correct. About leaking gas, yeah. Normally, if the gas is escaping, instead of saying um, escape, you can also say leak. And leak can be for liquid or gas. That's what Tomic, Tomic just mentioned something which is good to know. So you have to leak. This can be for a gas or a liquid. Okay, for example, I cannot stop my tap from dripping. Okay, my tap is dripping. My drap is leaking. I cannot stop the water. For example, the Titanic had a big leak. <laughs> Lots of water entered. Okay, so a rubber ball, boing, boing. What is the verb for that? Which verb should we use? Some of you already have it correct. I'll put it. Now jump means to go up. Jump, which doesn't appear on the list, means to go up. You jump, go up and over something. Bounce means it goes down and down and down. Okay, so the correct word is bounce, okay? Yeah, the opposite of loose is tight. Hey, Johnny, I recommend clicking the live button. You'll get up to where we are, okay? So, uh, what else we got? In, so we have, yeah, so bounce. Can people bounce? Yeah. Yeah, no, probably I won't go in that direction. <laughs> Bow. <laughs> okay, next one. Oh, what I just do? No. Okay, one second. I gotta move myself. Ah, accidentally pushed the wrong place. Okay, you see all of my secrets out there. <laughs> okay, there it goes. Now. Um, the next one is this. Okay, so we'll get rid of that. This is the next one. Uh, 
A bouncer! Yeah, they like, they stop you from entering a nightclub. Number 14, loose windows in the window frame. Okay, we've already seen loose, which is the opposite of tight. Loose windows in a window frame. Frame is like that wooden thing around there. When a large vehicle, like a truck or a bus, passes nearby. Which verb best describes what is happening here? Yes! Someone's got it right. What, what happens to the windows? This happens. And it starts making a noise. Like this. It moves. Yes, it moves in a way. But moves, the verb move, does not appear in my list. You need to choose another one. What is the verb? Ah, uh -huh. yep, someone else has got it correct. If you're interested in knowing what happened to my arm, I did a video for the channel members. I go into detail and vocabulary about everything. Okay, um, vibrate, vibrate, flows. Okay, window doesn't flow, it shakes. Yeah, the window's shaking, but shake does not appear in my list. There's another one, exactly. There it is, Yiran's also got it right. Vibrate, okay? So like it vibrates, it makes it sound like when the bus goes by, or nearby, which means close to where you are, it vibrates. That was easy. Next one. Um, what about this? <laughs> the population of a town becoming bigger. The population of a town becoming bigger which which one is it the population of a town becoming bigger this one aha uh -huh. now there are a couple of words that are similar okay there's probably three words that are similar I'm going to put my answer in the chat in a moment. I'm just preparing it. So some people say um, grow, some people say rise, and some people say raise. What is the difference? Oh, actually, I'll see if I can find that. I actually have a video. About, I have a video about the difference between raise and rise from memory. While I'm waiting for your answers. Grow, grow, grow seems to be the big one. Grow, let's have a look. What is the difference between, good question, what is the difference between vibrates and shakes? Vibrate is like a lot more rapid, rapidly, like and often makes a sound. Look, there's certain things that vibrate. And shake doesn't necessarily, like if someone shakes me, I don't necessarily make a sound. <laughs> okay, I'm old, so sometimes my bones make sounds when they people shake me. <laughs> But normally a person, you can shake a person, you can shake hands, but, and it's like, it's not rapid normally, okay? But vibrate is like very, very quickly, like this. Very, very quick shaking. So shake is usually slow, but vibrate is like that, okay? And often vibrate, there's a, there's a sound that, are, that is accompanied with it. Okay. Um, larger, raise, rise. You raise your hand, yes. Okay, the correct answer is to grow. Why? So we have raise, what was it? We've got grow. I'll put these ones. I'll see if I can make a copy. I need two hands again. 
Uh, grow. Raise. And rise. What is the difference between grow, raise, and rise? Whew. Raise or increase or grow. Have we got increase there? No, we don't have increase. Okay. What is the difference between... Yeah, it increases. The population can increase. Collocation. The population grows. The collocation. Exactly. So normally the populations grow. You just need to remember it like that. The population grows. Grow means to go up. For example, to increase in size, height, or usually quality. For example, your hair can grow, okay? But it's normally the population grows. But raise and rise. Later, I'll put a link in the, in the comments because I'm, I'm pretty sure I have a video about raise versus rise. But I'll look for it later. Because what does raise mean? What does raise mean? To raise an object, exactly. You need to raise something. You raise your hand. Pick me, pick me. Okay, who wants chocolate? You immediately raise your hand. Or the teacher and the student, the students raise their hand. I know the answer. No, actually, I just want to go to the bathroom. Okay, so you raise your hand. Okay, you raise an object. Now, rise means so raise, you need to raise something, and you cannot raise a population unless no, I won't go in that direction, but <laughs> you cannot raise a population. Okay, rise means something goes up. So to raise means to increase the level of something. Uh, rise means to go up, increase an upward mo movement. But why don't we say population? Because it's normally associated with grow. For example, prices rise, they go up. Okay. So the correct answer is, I put in the chat 15, grow. Temperature rises, exactly. The temperature rises, that's very good. The next one, number 16, a t-shirt which has been washed so often <laughs> it has lost its color. A t-shirt that has been washed so often it has lost its color. What is the verb for that? You can raise a child too. That's very good. To raise a child, when you learn a new word, also, there's a, a, a new verb. It's often very good to learn the different meanings because many times there's more than one meaning. For example, raise means you raise the, the prices, which means you increase something. Okay, the government raised the taxes. Also, it has a completely different meaning, as Tomic says, you can raise a child. It means to, you know, they're with you and you help them grow and develop and everything like that. So number 16, I'll put it in the chat. I don't think I have. Nope, I haven't yet. What was the last one? 15. Many people have it correct already. Begins with F. Exactly. 16 is fade. Okay? So your t-shirt fades. For example, this is blue. It used to be black. No. <laughs> like if, if... Okay, a classic example is if you have a t-shirt and it is black, completely black, then if you wash it multiple times, you wash it multiple times, it becomes... Not black, like a gray, a dark gray color, okay? That's because it has faded, okay? Music or sound can also fade. It means to become less. What have I got in my notes? To lose color or strength, okay? 
For example, jeans fade. If you wash them a lot, okay, jeans fade. Or for example, the ambulance or the police, whatever. You can hear it, the sound of the ambulance. And it goes and it fades. The sound fades. It becomes less. Okay? So it's often used with color or sound. Okay? Color or sound. Um, a glacier starts melting. That's a good one, Johnny. So a glacier melts, that's for one of the other verbs, it melts and the water rises. Okay, so we have, uh, yeah, so that one's easy, fade. Was it like in, was it the end, what was it end game? The Marvel dude, like everyone started fading when Thanos did his, was it his gauntlet things? Okay, anyway, 17, this is easy. Very simple, number 17. The sun coming up in the morning is... What is the answer? Put your answers in the chat. Sunset. No, this is coming up. Yes! Sunset is the opposite of sunrise. I actually did a video, a nice video, a long time ago, about the difference between sunset and sunrise. Just because I wanted to put some wonderful, beautiful photos. Look for it. And the sun rises, okay? So it is to rise. So that when it comes up in the morning, it is rise. It is not rays. Because rays means someone make something go up. Do you push the sun into the su into the sky? No, it just happens naturally. So it is the sun rises. Simple. And what about the opposite? What is the opposite? The sun going down in the evening. What is that? We do not say drop. <laughs> it's like the sun's in the sky and then whoo. Oops, suddenly night time, because it's a slow process, so it cannot be drop. <laughs> 18. Oh, I do it in the wrong place. I'm always doing it in the wrong place. Copy. I'm, put, I'm just putting my answer in the chat so you know what it is. Now... You have sun, whoops, sunrise. Oops. You have sunrise and sunset. Now this is not an adjective. Um, this is the noun. Sunrise and sunset. A sunrise, a sunset. The sun is escaping. <laughs> Go down. Yeah, the sun goes down. Yeah, but it's not the singular. This is like a, a phrasal verb. These are just verbs. It is set. Exactly. So the sun sets. Because this is the noun. Sunrise, which is a sunrise is not a verb. It is a sunrise and a sunset. A sunrise and sunset. But if we have... I'll just... But if we have the verb, we say the sun... It's always slow, one hand. The sun rises. So here we say, the sun sets. But set also has another meaning. 
The sun rises and the sun sets. So here it's the verb. The sun sets with an S at the end because it is it. But set has another meaning. Set also has another meaning. Do you know what the other meaning is? The sun sets. What is the meaning of to set? What is the other meaning of to set? The sun sets. What's another use of it? Everyone's looking in the online dictionary. <laughs> to arrange? Yes, you can set a table. It's like to prepare to set, for example, a table. That's another video about setting the table. Okay? You don't say to put the table. No, you set the table. If you're a Spanish speaker, be careful. To set a table means like to put everything in its correct position on the table so you can have dinner or you can have um, lunch or breakfast. You can set a date. Exactly. It's like to fix a date. Also, for example, if you have jelly, jelly doesn't, you know, jelly, what does jelly do? It blah, 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 blah. Jelly wobbles. But before it wobbles, before you have a wobbly jelly, it's a liquid. Okay? So when the liquid transforms into jelly, that is also to set. Okay? It means like a semi solid word. That's another one. Anyway, so the sun going down in the evening. So always learn the different meanings of of a new verb. This will help you a lot, especially in the IELTS exam. You need to know different ways of saying the same thing. Okay, next one. Uh, one second. Uh, this one here, number 19. A wheel on a slow moving train. What is number 19? What do you think it is? I'm putting my... You can set someone up. That's a good one, Tomic. Like, you know, to get them involved in something that they didn't want to. <laughs> or they want to. I'll just get rid of these. I'll put noun here. To set a trap for a rat, that's another good one. It's like to prepare it. To prepare it, you set a trap, you prepare a trap for a rat. That's good. A wheel on a slow moving train. What is the wheel doing? Now spin is when it's very fast. And this is intentionally a slow moving train. So it's not spinning. Spinning, remember, is very fast. Now it could in a way be rotate. We'll rotate. Because it's like in a fixed point. But there is no, but we have already used rotate. So we can't use rotate. It must be something else. Normally. When we talk about wheels, we don't say rotate. It's almost always turn. The wheels turn. The wheel of time turns. Ah. Now, on a train, normally it doesn't wobble. And or you hopefully it doesn't wobble. <laughs> it goes from side to side. We just normally a wheel turns. It's like a collocation. It's like wheels, they turn. You just need to learn those two words together. Okay? Because it, in, in theory, the wheel does revolve because it does it in a fixed axis. But normally with a wheel, we use turn. Okay? 
Next one is this one. Number 20. Traffic lights going from red to amber or yellow, but normally yellow, amber, which is like a darker yellow color, to green. What verb can we use? Yes, turn has a lot of meanings. In particular, we use it in phrasal verbs. Exactly. Turn is used a lot in phrasal verbs. Turn off, turn up, turn down. Yes. If you're interested in phrasal verbs, go check out um, on, on this YouTube channel. I've got many phrasal verbs. Okay. So number 20. One second. I'm looking for something. While I'm waiting for your answers. Ah, okay. Here, I'm going to put a link in the chat. I have my free phrasal verb course. You don't need to register anything. It's just there. This has lots of phrases. At the moment, I have 32 phrasal verbs. 32 phrasal verbs with a video, a chart, many different meanings. Okay? So look, look at that later. It's in the chat. And if you're watching this later, I'll put it in the description too. Everyone is putting the right answer. Yes. It doesn't turn. It. I'll put my answer in the chat. The traffic lights change. They go from red to amber to green. That was a simple one. Okay. So the traffic light changes from red to yellow to green. It's like that in every country, I think. Next one, 21. So that was easy. Cliffs being slowly destroyed by the sea. What is the verb? Cliffs being slowly destroyed by the sea or the ocean. That was quick and good. Aha. Yes. Uh, let's let's have a look in a second. I'll put my I'm going to see how many people put different answers. So we've got erode, crumble, erode, erode. It sounds like like it is an accent in, in British English. Many people think British English is one type. British English, there are different accents in Great Britain. Okay? Or in England even. And one of them is eroded horse. Erode a horse. Which is a short way of saying he rode a horse. But anyway, erode, crack, hmm. The correct answer is erode. What? Washed away? Yeah? Erode. What does erode mean? What? How can you explain erode? Goes to the dictionary online. <laughs> erode. What is a ro Okay, what is a cliff? Okay, first a cliff is... Okay, using imagination. Oh, I'm trying to draw a person while I'm waiting for everyone. Oh no, this isn't happening. Okay, there's a person on top of the cliff. I don't know why I put a person on there, but anyway. Now a cliff is a solid wall, or normally solid, wall of rock. Okay, it's a normally solid wall of of rock and sometimes there is land and sometimes there is water okay like this sometimes there's water there's like a solid like um dover which is in in the bottom part of england there are some white cliffs 
Okay, there's a difference between crumble and erode, which we're going to look at in a moment. The correct answer for this one is... We're going to look... When I explain crumble, you'll see the difference. I'll leave the cliff here. Now, erode, washed away in a way, it's washed away. In and in, in a way, it does crumble. But we're talking about it, the cliff being destroyed, which means it's disappearing. Erode means to destroy or wear away gradually over time. Okay. For example, metal. You can erode metal with acid. You put acid on it. I don't know why you want to do it. And it erodes over time. Or the ocean slowly eroded the cliff. So to erode means it slowly disappears because of the action, normally because of the action of water or liquid. Okay? Whereas crumble doesn't necessarily mean liquid is involved. You can crumble something in your hand. You have a cake in your hand or a sponge and you do this and it crumbles. Or you have some dirt in your hand. You do this and like crumbles into pieces. Okay? Whereas a road is normally has some type of is caused by a liquid like acid or water, the ocean, the sea. Normally, not always. So the correct answer is in the chat 21, erode. Next one. This one's going to be interesting. 22. Documents being laid out. Laid is the past participle of to lay. If you don't know the difference between lie and lay, I have a video about it. Go check it out later. So being to lay out. Exactly. So you put the dot, you have a table, your desk, and then you put it there, you put it there, put it there. You like you, I just about said it. Someone's got it. Yes. So you, you cover the table in something. You cover the table in this, in this case with documents. Okay. Exactly. The correct answer is, I'll put it in the chat while I'm waiting for other people. <clears throat> spread. Okay. You spread the documents on the table. It means to cover the surface of something. You cover the surface of something. The desk you can cover it with papers. Good one, Iran. You cover it with papers. You cover it with documents. You can also use spread. You have some... Oh, I can't do it. Okay, I've got the bread on the top here. <laughs> and you have some butter. You spread it. You cover it with butter and then jam or Nutella or something like that. You spread it. Okay, next one. Yeah, there are 38 in total, I think, today. So it's being spread on... You spread butter on your bread. Excellent, Oz. Very good. Next one. This is going to be difficult. A wide river winding through the countryside. Now, this is fun. To wind. Be careful. You spread a rumor. That's a good one, Tomek. Okay, these are different 
words, completely different words. Wind. Listen to the pronunciation. Wind, verb. Wind, noun. So here we have a noun, but they're different. These are completely different words. Oops. Okay, so these are completely different words. To wind and wind. Wind is like the air blowing in your hair or your face or the trees. Okay? For example, if I, I'm going to try and draw this. Okay, so this. Okay, it's a red cloud. Whatever. <laughs> okay, we've got red clouds. Sunset. Imagination. So if we have the wind, it's like the wind blows, okay? This is wind pronunciation, but to wind, a completely different word. Now to wind, one example exactly like Ozput, you wind a clock. You have a clock, an old clock, not a digital clock. You wind it up you so that it keeps going but also has another meaning so that's one meaning of to wind another wind means it's like uh, like moving in a direction okay the wind blowing through now a wide river winding through the countryside. You imagine it's going like this. The correct verb for this, and this is normally a new verb for everyone, is meander. Exactly. Now, meander can be for a river, you know, going, it's not going straight. When a river goes straight, it is not meander. It's like going over here, and then over here, and then over there. That is meander. It's like going, and a person can meander. It's like, you're here, and then you go over here, and then you go here. It's like no specific direction, okay? Uh, what have I got in my notes? It's like to follow a winding course like that, just slowly going wherever. Uh, have I got another word? Yeah. So, a wide river winding through the countryside is meander. Specific word. This one's going to be easy. The sun turning people on a beach bright red. What is the verb here? What is the verb? The sun. This is an easy one. I meandered through the park on the way to the shops. That is a great example, Oz. I meandered through the park, just looking at the flowers and the birds and the couples doing rude things. And, you know, just going through the park. Burn. Yes. Deep Purple Song. Okay, 24 is very simple. We don't really need to talk too much about this one. Burn. 24 is burn. Okay? Usually with fire or from the sun. Because the noun is... So here we have to burn. But when your skin becomes red because of the sun, because you didn't use sunblock or protection, oh, and, it, and it hurts a lot, that is called sunburn. Ah, I have sunburn. And typical, your friends, if you have sunburn on your back, they come up and like, hey, how's it going? Intentionally. That's the type of friends I have. <laughs> okay, so sunburn. Yeah, simple. Don't need to know much about that. Ooh, I like this one. An incense stick. I don't have an incense stick here. 
in the entrance to a temple. What verb? Burnout. That's this buzzword nowadays. Exactly. Burnout. It's like you work too much and too much and it's like, oh, I cannot handle it anymore. That's burnout. Very good. So 25. I'm going to put my answer while I'm waiting. But I'm not going to put it in the chat just yet. An incense stick. What is an incense stick? And are you had to bring one of those at all? An incense stick is a long like stick that has a type of substance and you burn it, but there's no fire. It just has a smoke coming out. And this has a lovely, usually, lovely smell or aroma and it's like, and it's typical in temples, you have an incense, incense stick, exactly, and it has a smell or sometimes at a yoga studio or some people's houses, they have an incense stick and they're like, ah. usually it's supposed to calm you or to make it smell nice. Now. Some people think, ah, burn, but no, we've already used burn, so we cannot use, yes, Oz, exactly, they are great for scratching broken arms, you put them up here, don't do this at home, this is not official medical advice, <laughs> but yes, oh, so good, <laughs> I know from experience this summer. Uh, there it is. It is smolder. Okay. Smolder. What is the difference between to burn and to smolder? Now to burn, there is normally What did I just do? <laughs> okay. So let's just use, okay, let's imagine this is an incense stick, whatever. Okay, and on the top here, normally you have, that's oh, strange, uh, there. You have this. Okay, what is this part called? If something, there's like a fire here. But this part at the top, okay. What is this part here called? This is called a flame, okay. So this is a flame, and when there is a flame, I don't like when it does that, okay, a flame. A flame is when there is a, f this is like the fire, and this is burning, but with, and very good, but when there is no flame, you blow it out, but there's still like a glowing, there's still a, a glowing light uh, around here. It's like a little bit, oops, around here, like glowing red, and there's no flame. It is to smolder. So to smolder, when something is burning, but there is no flame. Typical, when there is a house and a big fire, there's a huge fire, and then the firemen or firewomen, the firefighters, they come and psh, they put out the fire, but sometimes there's some still parts that are burning because there's smoke 
and embers. And that is smolder. Because an incense stick only has a flame at the beginning and then whew, you blow it out. And then it is still glowing, it's still hot. That is to smolder. Okay? So it is to smolder. To burn slowly with smoke but no flame. Okay? Exactly. Next one. 26. A lump, which means a small pot, or small amount, sorry, <laughs> of dry earth. So you have some dry earth in your hand. If it's wet, it's like, <clears throat> goes through your fingers. But if you have a lump or a small amount of dry earth, and you rub it between your fingers or someone's fingers. It falls into little pieces. When it falls into little pieces, what happens? I'll put my answer in the chat for a moment. Oops. Now, crack is usually something solid, and it's like... For example, a window can have a crack. Okay, so crack is something solid, and earth is not solid. A crack is normally a single, or like a line. For example, a crack you have, for example, you step on ice, <laughs> you step on ice, you step on ice and <coughs> these lines in the ice appear. That is crack. But with earth, can you see, with earth, can you see lines? If you have like a lot of earth, you cannot see lines, so that's not, can't be cracked. Or sometimes someone's lips cracked. I dropped the cup and it cracked, exactly. You have like a line going through here. It's not separated, normally. It's just like a line, which is like broken. Or sometimes multiple lines. In this case, Tomek had it first and then he ran. It is crumble. Ice cracks. Sometimes there is there are cracks in the earth, but it's like a line. But if you have earth and you do this, it's like falls into multiple pieces. The correct answer is this one here. Crumble. Means to break into small pieces or f small fragments okay to crumble you have a cake and you hold it and it's like falls into small pieces so yes a cliff can crumble okay a cliff can crumble because it like falls into little it's like to fall or convert into small pieces destroy a little bit in a way it can be destroyed you can use, and this is the origin of so we have to crumble and this is the origin of the word crumb remember the b is silent okay for example a crumb or crumbs plural normally it's crumbs it's normally used in plural so a crumb okay the b is silent crumb 
thumb. When a word ends in MB, nothing else, just MB, normally the B is silent. Crumb, thumb, numb. Okay? So, normally, but not always. Ah, you like bomb. Also. So, a crumb. You have some bread, or you're eating. Okay, if you have a beard and a moustache, and sometimes with a beard or your moustache, you eat a cake, or you eat some bread, and sometimes there's still some food <laughs> in the moustache or the beard that you can eat it later. <laughs> oh, yum. <laughs> this little fragment of food, fragment of food or small piece of food is called a crumb. If you have lots of them, lots of crumbs. People eat, sometimes there is crumbs on the plate. Okay? So to crumble is the verb, which means to fall into little pieces or fragments. If you crumble, it falls. Like, how can we use crumble figuratively? Look, figuratively. A theory can crumble, yes, because it smalls into little pieces. And it's but like it's yeah, it's not like whole or solid as it was before. So theory can crumble. It's like in a way it's it is being destroyed too. That's number twenty-six. Are you ready for the next one? This is gonna be very quick, very simple. Twenty-seven. Cold metal as it gets hotter. <laughs> Cold metal as it gets hotter. Also, good health and happiness to you. Good Cold metal as it gets hotter. Very simple. I'll put my answer in the chat because you will know this one. Uh, 27. As it gets hotter. What happens? I have to think for a moment. Which direction? <laughs> what is the answer? What is the verb to describe cold metal as it gets hotter, it becomes bigger? It... Oh, I've got to stop using my hand. <laughs> what is it? No one's putting... Ah, okay. One person. Bring it. Anyone else? Yes! Tomic, Fabi. Who else? Yes! You done also? Great! Expand. Okay? So it grows in its size. It grows in size. It becomes bigger. So metal. It expands. And what about the opposite? What about number 28? Hot metal. When it gets cooler, so the opposite is shrink. Mm, that's usually like shrink is like a lot, and shrink does not appear in my list. Shrink is usually like, is typical with clothes. Clothes shrink. If you put them in the washing machine, certain clothes sometimes. Is there another verb here that can be used? Exactly. Contract. Expand. Contract. Okay. Now... I want you to listen to the pronunciation. Two different words. Okay. The noun form is a contraction. But we also have... I want you to listen to this. Okay, to contract is the verb, the noun is a contraction 
for the verb to contract. But look at this. To contract, you can contract a virus, exactly. When it's a verb, to contract, it's the last part, to contract. He contracted a virus, he contracted something. But a contract, which is a business agreement, the accent is on the first part. A contract. So, a contract contract or a contract that's the noun and the verb to to contract okay so difference in pronunciation means a different meaning and a different form okay next one 28 this one is easy 29 a piece of elastic being pulled so that it becomes longer. What is the verb? Put your answer in the chat. He signed the contract. Everyone's putting contact. It should be contract. He signed the contract. Number 29. A piece of elastic being pulled so it becomes longer. Yes! Good. Stretch. For example, my shirt, if I pull it this direction, I stretch it. Look at the hole. If I do this, the hole is bigger. I stretched my shirt to stretch, to make something longer. That was easy. So expand means in every direction, but stretch is specifically to make something longer, okay? So stretch makes something longer, and expand means to make it bigger in general, like really big. Next one, 30. A window being hit by a stone psh, so that a long thin break is formed. Yeah, my shirt's not bigger. But sometimes when you stretch something, it returns to its normal size. A window being hit by a stone so that a long thin break is formed. What is the verb? I'll put my answer in the chat while I'm waiting. Uh, yeah. One person has a correct tooth. Three. There it is. Exactly. Crack. Crack is to break something without dividing it into two separate parts, okay? For example, I dropped this. There is a crack here, okay? This is a crack, but it's not divided into two separate parts. It's just a line, okay? So that is the crack. Like you stand on the ice, it cracks. But when it's a bone, if there's no complete separation, it is called, normally in a bone, it is called, I'll put it in the chat. Actually, no, I'll put it up here. Um, it is a fracture, which, which can also be a verb. To fracture or a fracture, verb or noun. Okay, so it's like if it's completely broken, it's separated here, separated here, that is break. But a fracture is a crack in a bone. Okay, 
So you don't crack your bones. Specifically for bones, you fracture your bones. Okay? 31. Next one. Coffee falling out whoops, of a cup by mistake. What is your answer? Not many left. I'm waiting for your answers. Ah, oh, simple. Ah, this is easy. Here's my answer. Spill, exactly. Oh, so easy. Spill refers to liquid. Remember the gas? The gas leaks. Gas doesn't spill unless it's a liquid gas, but that's something else. Okay, he spilled his coffee. You spill the beans, which means to tell something that happened. Exactly. Okay, so spill. Yeah, simple. So the correct answer is spill. Next one, 32. A bomb suddenly blowing up. What is that verb? This one's also very easy. Oops, nope. To suddenly burst loudly and violently, owing to a, a release of internal energy. <sighs> exactly, explode. That was easy. A population can explode also. It means like to grow exponentially, like grow in a lot of way. It doesn't erupt. That's something a volcano does. So a bomb suddenly blowing up is explode. Simple. 33. A boat going to the bottom of the sea. Blah, 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 blah. This one's easy. Someone's got it right. One person. Who else? Two. Exactly. 33. Now, the correct answer is sink. It goes down. Okay, it doesn't drop because drop is from a height. Okay, so drop is from a, a tall place and it goes down. It drops. When it's in the water, it sinks. Okay, to sink. Very simple. And what is the opposite of sink? Dead fish lying on the surface of a polluted lake. What is the opposite? A boat, if it doesn't sink, what does a boat normally do? Or what do dead fish normally do? They... Yes! So, opposite of sink is... Exactly. Float. Because subside is normally on something solid. Okay? Which when it goes down. Like on like land. Soft land. But a boat sinks. Float. Float. This is easy. Yes. Next one. 35. The last ones are easy. A volcano throwing out lava and ash. Ash is like the remains of something burning. It's like a gray material. Like from a cigarette or from a volcano. For example, in, in those, this, those Spanish islands. Can't remember which one, the name of it right now. 
there's a volcano that is erupting okay erupt exactly so it throws out lava we had a volcano eruption here at the beginning of last year in new zealand in a little island in tonga recently there's another volcano erupted all over the place okay erupt now yeah be careful because what happens if you swallow some air or you drink some fizzy drinks and <laughs> what is that i can't do it myself never been able to it is to burp like burp if you eat too quickly or have lots of coca-cola or lemonade or something burp that is to burp so be careful which is different because i know that some languages it sounds <laughs> some you don't say erupt no you say to burp incense sticks produce ash exactly okay number i've actually experienced a volcano eruption i can i walking in the street this is many years ago and ash coming in it was terrible we had to go in the house and everything was and you couldn't use the water for many days because it was contaminated by the ash uh, okay next one got three more orders for a new product this is difficult orders for a new product arriving at a company very slowly orders for a new product arriving at a company very slowly Ash is normally uncountable. It's like the gray or black powder or what is left after a fire, like especially wood or volcano eruptions. So normally it is uncountable. But ashes can also be a plural countable noun. So it depends. Okay. But in general, it is like use it as, as a, an uncountable noun. orders subside now they could subside yes they could subside but we have already used the word subside we used it for the house going in slowly into the ground so we need another verb what's the other verb here that we can use yeah so the you know the orders subsided that is possible but there is another one what is the other one orders for a new product arriving at a company very slow wobble means it moves from side to side iran the master because there's not many options left <laughs> trickle now trickle is normally associated with li uh, with liquid for example remember before I had, I drew a tap or a faucet. I should have saved it, but I didn't. Okay, let's just imagine this is the, you know, the tap, whatever. <laughs> okay. Um, and we learned a word which was one so remember this is the word which is like to drip little by little drip this is to drip remember 
Now this is to drip like little drops. And if you open it up completely, it flows. But sometimes it is not drops, but like a long, little continuous, a little continuous flowing of water. For example, you have a river. And sometimes there can be a lot of water in the river. But sometimes, especially if there are avocado trees nearby, you have the river like this. So this is normally in the river, it's full of water. But sometimes when there is not much water, for example, you can have like a small line of water, a small line of water like this, just a little amount. This is a trickle. Yeah, it could be like the opposite. Water trickles out of the tap just a little bit. You didn't turn it off completely. It can be drips, blip, blip, blip. Or it can be like a small amount of water. What have I got in my notes? For example, to flow slowly in a thin stream. Okay, it's not little drops. So that is a trickle. So normally, this trickle is for water. It's like a small flow. A small flow. The water in the stream trickles into the river. Exactly, because it's not very, not very much. So the orders for a new product can also trickle, like little, slow amounts. Not a big flow, not a lot. So that is trickle. Okay. Next one. This is going to be very simple. You'll get this one. An alarm clock suddenly going off. What is that one? An alarm clock suddenly going off is... <laughs> it's easy to lose track of time. An alarm clock suddenly going off. The correct answer is... This one's an easy one. What do... It goes... Or ding 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 ding. Okay, it does vibrate. But does the vibration make you wake up? It's something else that makes you wake up. Because we used vibrate for the window. Exactly. You got it right. Yes, someone else. It is ring perfect it rings it doesn't you don't say it sounds or no it's rings and what is the phrasal verb that you use to stop it from ringing you beep what is the phrasal verb that you use to stop the alarm clock from ringing the phrasal verb is To turn off. You turn off the alarm. When your alarm clock rings, just ring. You turn it off. The bell rings. The telephone rings. Exactly. Okay. And one more for today. A student lifting their hand into the air. We looked at this right at the beginning. What do we got? You snooze it. <laughs> yeah, it's like, no, nah, just five more minutes. Five more minutes. <laughs> exactly. So 38 is... <laughs> Wave. <laughs> Yeah, some students, they, they, they like, 
teacher, pick me, pick me. But no more students, they just raise their hands. <laughs> you raise your hand means you have to raise something. Always raise plus and the object. Raise your hand, raise your voice, raise something. Okay? So, let's have a look. That is absolutely all of them. So here, these were 38 verbs. Okay, we learned more than 38 verbs. And we also learned lots of nouns and things like that. Because one of the most difficult things about the IELTS exam, or exams in general, is the vocabulary. More than grammar, it is the vocabulary. Because if suddenly you see the word smolder, or trickle, or congeal, or meander, you think, <gasps> what is that? And sometimes students, when they see a word they don't know, especially in an exam, they're like, <gasps> they start stressing and worrying, okay? So the objective of this class today, one, learn 38 verbs, yes, but also just to learn, there, you need to know, if you learn one word, the different meanings of it, the different forms of it, sometimes the opposite of it, okay? And this will help you increase your vocabulary. Because if a reading text, for example in IELTS, is, is often scientific, not always, you have this reading text, you need to learn words associated because the question in the IELTS exam won't use the exact same word as what appears in the text. They'll use a synonym or a word with a similar meaning. So that's important to know is like, um, why did the, I oh know, an example. You know, why did the, I'll find one. So for example, you know, why did the house, or well, what happened to the house? What caused it to slowly sink? But in the text, it'll say subside. Okay, so you got to know different ways of saying exactly the same thing in IELTS, or in general. And it's good to increase your, your vocabulary. Okay, now just, just a quick notice for some of you Spanish speakers. In February, I'll... I will be doing, I'll explaining some basic English in Spanish. Okay, I'll be using Spanish. Si, hablo español. And so if you want to do it, but I won't be doing it on this channel. I'll be doing it here on Woodward Languages. Okay, just so you know, I'll be doing it there. Um, but it'll be basic lessons for students, just, you know, like learning to be, do, does, and things like that. Because on this channel, Woodward English, it's going to be only everything in English for everyone. But I wanted to create some lessons for people that speak Spanish. For the basic lower level students. So that is something that I'm going to do on that channel there. So please subscribe, follow and everything like that. But that will be in February. Okay? And I'll let you, I'll let you know. Okay? So... Thank you, everyone, for participating today. If you want to know what happened here, go check out the, the members video that I wrote <laughs> or used, I did. Okay, so thanks a lot for participating. I hope you found this useful. Okay, specifically for IELTS, but it's useful in general, not just for the exam. And until next time, thank you. Sleep well, everyone. I know a lot of you are staying awake late at night. See you later, Iran. Say hello to your wife, Rosanna. Also, take care. Enjoy your weekend. And until next time, have an awesome day.